Good morning. It is 8 o'clock. I've been awake for about a half hour. I stayed in my sleeping bag for a good 15 minutes, did some back stretching after I got dressed and layered. It's about 24 degrees, 25 degrees inside the van. A little hard to tell what that thermometer I have in here, but the outside temperature is 12 according to my van. I had a good night last night. I used this water bottle to keep warm. That was such a good idea. Basically, I poured boiling water in it last night. Stuck it at my feet, down by my feet first to get my feet warm. After my feet got warm, I moved it up to other areas. Usually, like what I find that gets cold is my back and my butt. So just kind of move it around those areas to keep keep warm and it's it's not warm now I mean it's warm but it's not hot it's it's not something that would keep you warm so I'm gonna dump this out I'll have to redo it refill it with some boiling water tonight when I'm sleeping to keep warm that is an excellent idea for those that are out hiking in winter time I still need to make breakfast and get my pack all finalized and decide uh, what exactly I'm taking. Since I'm not hiking very far today, I'm going to be making a hot breakfast. I brought some yummy biscuits and gravy. So I'll be heating some water. That'll work good because I need to heat water for my thermo flask and pour some of that water into my drinking bottle to keep hydrated it's a little difficult sometimes to keep hydrated in this cold temperature you don't feel like you want to drink water or anything like that because it's so cold but you need to remember to drink you're losing a lot of moisture wearing a lot of layers of clothes hopefully i'm not too warm right now i'm just a touch cold so i might add one more layer before i get outside because i don't want to be cold I had poured out some water from my thermo flask into my drinking bottle and kept that in my sleeping bag at night. I poured some boiling water in here last night to keep it hot and you can see my glasses get fogged up from it. The water is still pretty warm in there. This works pretty good to keep your water from, from freezing throughout the day. You take this bottle, you fill it up with hot water, boiling water through the day you pour it from here into your drinking bottle a small drinking bottle you don't need to keep it too big but that way your bottle doesn't freeze mine's just a simple small, small 14 ounce Nalgene wide mouth bottle and I keep it easily accessible so that I'm continuously drinking and hopefully at the end of the day I don't get any frozen bottles that would be terrible because once you get a frozen bottle, frozen water in your bottle, there's no way you can thaw it out except to get it into somewhere warmer. And there is no place warmer out here. Just wait for the water to heat up. It looks like it's getting warm. My feet are a little bit cold, so hoping when we start moving around that, that it'll they'll warm up. Looks like we're finally boiling. When you're making these, make sure you take out the do not eat little packet. <laughs> it says one and a half. It's actually easier to do three quarter cups twice. And a lot of times I'll stick this back inside the pot, but I need to heat up some more water. So I'm going to Stick it inside here. I could use some more hot chocolate. I'm gonna make some more hot chocolate tonight, today. Actually, maybe I'll do some coffee. Mm -hmm. 
it's been about four minutes at least for my little meal. I'm gonna give it a stir. Here, take a look at the biscuits and gravy. Looks pretty good, doesn't it? This one's actually really good. The water is boiling again, and I am going to be pouring the boiling water into my thermo flask. As I told you before, my thermo flask is to store my hot water in so that it doesn't freeze while I'm hiking. I pour from the thermo flask into my drinking Nalgene 14 ounce bottle. And that way I have a constant supply of water while I'm hiking. I have a little bit of hot water left. I'm going to pour it into my cup so I can clean it and clean my utensil as well. Dishes are pretty simple out here. I don't use any soap. I just stir my spoon up in the cup and make sure all the food particles are loosened as well as any of the residue from my drink. And I drink it down. This is the gate that I had mentioned was locked and I could not drive past. It actually provides a recreational area for those that enjoy some winter activities. It is very well groomed along this road and there is a sign in log where you can enter in your name and the date and the number in your party and what activity you're going to be doing, whether it's skiing or hiking or biking or snowshoeing. I actually had a little mishap this morning. I had loaded my gear and was strapping on my sleeping bag and tent and pad. And I smelt fuel. My reserve bottle was leaking. I'm gonna have to keep my pack upright. I have another one at home which is better quality. This one I think the O-ring is is uh, worn out and old so it's unfortunate I was able to clean it up it wasn't really too bad of a leak but still don't want to be having this kind of a problem on a long trip if I lost all my fuel that would that would really suck shorten the trip it looks like a lot of people actually hike in this area for Various things, some people ski, others snowmobile, but the log looked like it had a lot of people. It's really beautiful out here. I'm actually getting kind of warm now. It looks like they groom this road for easy walking. Got the stream over here. I have already explained that the purpose of this overnight solo backpacking trip was to test both the knowledge I have acquired in my equipment. I guess I could have tested these things under similar conditions at home in Billings, Montana or at a campground. And some of you might even wonder why I would even bother to hike two to four miles into the forest to run my test. First, yes, we do have snow on the ground in Billings and it is cold. Second, the same can be said of any campground I would go to right now. However, the answer is simple. I wanted to get as close to the real life example without risking life or limb. Sure, I can do that test at home or in a campground right next to my van, but what happens when a problem arises and there are always problems? Take the most obvious problem example, temperature control. If I'm in my sleeping bag and I'm starting to get cold and my van or house is 20 feet away, am I going to fix the problem or retreat to the warm sanctuary of my van or home? If I am two and a half miles from my car, it is not that easy. I have to take down my tent, 
get all my gear together into my pack. All this would take longer because it would be dark. Then I would have to hike out. Even without a pack, it would take me an hour. Suddenly, the easier solution is to fix the problem. Simply, maybe I have to go to the bathroom. Or maybe I have to heat up some water on my stove for my hot water bottle. Or maybe I need to add another layer. Took a little break. It's 11 o'clock. Been hiking for a half hour. I shed some of my clothing, my big heavy jacket, as well as some of my head covering. I have a feeling I'm going to take more off. It's pretty warm. It looked like it was about 30 degrees, according to my thermometer. I've seen a couple more snow skiers. Nobody else hiking, though. Maybe nobody else dumb enough. Who knows? Why does that water look cold? There's a little creek dumping into West Fork here, I believe that is Basin Creek. Wishing maybe I brought my snowshoes, but the road seems really well packed. They groom it, so I shouldn't need it on the road. I probably won't need them. There's only a couple places when I went off the road that it became apparent that it was pretty deep. The snowshoes would have been serviceable. Right now I'm just wearing my micro spikes. I have my crampons in my pack. Just gonna have to make do without them. I didn't want the extra weight for just a day trip, especially when I'm not gonna be camping too far from the road. I bought a new microphone and I keep forgetting to turn it on. So I took it off, put it in my pocket. I'll only probably use it if I'm going to be recording it at some distance, like when I'm setting up the tent or something like that. You can hear that, but the ground sounds kind of hollow. I'm walking on it every once in a while. It's gorgeous up here. You can actually see quite a bit of foot traffic and ski traffic on the road and around. People bring their dogs. It's supposed to be unleashed, but they don't leash them. I haven't seen one leashed yet. I don't mind as long as they're picking up after their dogs. Looks like that little creek was Basin Creek. starting to warm up so I'm gonna slow down took my hat off should be really close to the campground basin campground I took a drink of my tea and my tea is still really hot in my little bottle it's gonna take a while to cool down especially at this temperature still using my Fingerless gloves only. Not really that cold yet, so don't see a need to put any additional layer on my hands. My feet are nice and toasty warm. Hopefully not too warm. I was worried about them before because they were getting kind of cold, but I was in camp or just standing around not doing too much movement. Obviously a lot of snow on this side where the sun doesn't hit and on the south facing slopes. Hardly any snow at all now. Just reached Basin Campground and I checked my mileage. I'm at 1.3 miles. That sign says Cascade Campground 3 miles, so I may choose a Spot closer, I'll see when I get going if there's a 
good spot, but that was where I was planning on staying for the night. I know there's lots of other places. There's even some places right here in this campground I could stay, but I wanted to avoid taking this campground. This is where I normally park when I go fishing in this area. And that gate is usually shut, or it's been shut during the summer. That's the bridge out, being out. A lot of flat area over there is where I could camp. Go a little bit farther. Looks like they opened it for recreational purposes. Close the other gate so people can drive in. But I believe that bridge is still out. I don't know how they could have fixed it already. By the way, that gate there is at 1.5 miles. So I was right. Good estimate. So I probably have another oh, 2.7 miles to that campground. But if I find something more suitable before then, I'll stop there. Gotta take a little break, drink some water, and take care of some nature. I'm taking a much more leisurely pace right now. Trying not to get too heated. Got still a lot of layers on and I feel kind of warm. So I wanna careful not to start to sweat and then you get cold in the summer this area was a cliff looks like they put some rocks here to shore it up to try to protect it from erosion. Yeah, it was a sheer cliff and I was fishing from here down to the creek down there. Caught some fish. But it looks a little more accessible now with the rocks so I could walk down there and fish in the summertime. Won't be doing any of that right now. Looks like it's going to be difficult to get water from the creek for, walk, for drinking, but that's okay. There's lots of snow. Come up the snow. As I have already mentioned before, I am very familiar with this area of West Fork Rock Creek. I've done a lot of hiking and fishing in this creek and its tributaries. In fact, my dad and a couple of my nephews spent some time here last summer fishing. We had a great time and caught a lot of rainbows and brooks. They had such a great time, we are planning another outing this summer and it sounds like more family will be coming to visit. So the experts recommended starting with less gear than you think on the hike so that you don't get too warm and then adding layers as you go along well I didn't listen I, w I was pretty cold this morning so I had my snow pants on and my big jacket but I've shed both of those I'm now just wearing my jeans with some base layer and I don't feel cold at all right now but once I get moving I'm sure I'm going to be more than fine it's noon and I think I need to take a break, eat something. I'm also gonna check my pack straps to see if everything is intact. Uh, drink something. Might get a little chilled on the break, but I need to get some food into me, I think. I got some nuts and some granola bars for hiking 
didn't bring too much. Not as much as I normally do. I do like to snack, but trying to keep this hike nice and easy, not working myself too hard. So I'm gonna stop up here, take care of those things. There's still some animals moving about. There's some, I think some moose tracks. And that is why I bring my 45 along because cougars are still out and about. I know the bears are supposed to be sleeping, but there might be a strange one that might get up or something like that. I doubt it at this time of year, but you never know. Coming up to a flat spot up here, I'm gonna see what it looks like. So much of the bear tooths is really steep. The canyons and climbing out, out of the bottom of the valley going up on the mountain it's really steep can't see it really here but check out on this side goes up but this is a flatter area I'm gonna take a little diversion here Let's see if I can't find a good place to maybe camp out or maybe I'll keep going I was gonna take a break but I found a good place to camp and I'm just gonna eat my lunch now. Bring along some kind bars. Love these. Love chocolate and nuts, particularly almonds. That's what this one is. I also have some cashews. I just found a good buy for some cashews, some uh, unsalted, unroasted. Really good for when I'm hiking. But uh, this is where I'm gonna be camping. There's a nice flat spot over, over there. Pitch the tent. I'll film that so you guys can see me pitch my tent. All right, now I'm just gonna relax, drink some water, have a granola bar. Stay tuned for part three, where I'll be doing some camp chores, including setting up my tent, cooking dinner, and preparing for bed.